So now we're going to finish up on an interesting topic, which is the topic of community. And for that purpose, Chris Deneef is going to speak with us. And Chris is an innovation consultant, which means he helps other people do the innovating. But his passion is responsible innovation, responsible relating to ethical issues. Responsible innovation is innovation where these questions are present from the start, from day one, and does not come as an afterthought. Did you bring any chocolate with you? Okay, then I'll let you, I'll let you proceed. Please help me welcome Chris Deneef. Okay, so for those who were at my keynote, um, I think it was like this afternoon, but last year. This is one of my slides from last year. Um, I, <clears throat> I had breakfast with Brad in December, uh, the week before Christmas. Uh, in Brussels. I don't think Brad comes very often to Brussels, but um, <clears throat> we had breakfast together uh, very early on a Saturday morning because he was going on a flight to Africa. And we were talking about if I could do something at COFIS this year, and I mean, he knows I'm in innovation. So I was expecting to do or say or do something about innovation. And he called me 10 days ago and he said, all at the end of the DAS symposium, there will be three or four minutes left, and if you could do something about community, that would be nice. So I entered this morning with no slides, and then I saw it was all very nicely organized, and everyone had slides and whatever, so I made some slides uh, from what I've seen this morning and from recycling my own stuff. Um, I, and I wanted to put this up here. It's nothing to do with innovation, but it's an introduction. Uh, with uh, uh, com community, but it's an introduction. Um, <clears throat> and I think it fits well with what Amy was saying just a minute ago. Um, DSM, you may not know DSM, but DSM is the largest company in the Netherlands, and it's a chemical concern. It's very large. Um, and um, the CEO of DSM said this, uh, I think it's about one and a half years ago. Now. He said, um, <clears throat> from now on, all innovation will be social. Um, because a business cannot survive in a society that fails. So if we blow up the society around us through whatever, uh, then ultimately we're going to hurt ourselves. And that is sufficient reason for any innovation that we do to be... Uh, I didn't get the controls. Um, it's going to go magic like that. Um, <clears throat> at, um, <clears throat> at TED last year, uh, John Shirley, which is an English science fiction author, uh, he said something similar. He said, from, all, from now on, all innovation will be sustainable because if you develop something and <clears throat> it pollutes in any way, uh, whether it's in the packaging, the logistics, uh, the production, I mean, if it has a footprint, then basically you didn't develop it. Yes. So your standard for developing something when you innovate some new product or service should be actually that it has zero footprint. Um, <clears throat> now, the, the thing is that um, <clears throat> uh, in innovation, uh, sustainability and, and has to be there from the very start. And what I see in my practice is that it still is there way too often as an afterthought. Um, <clears throat> there's this great idea, they pull a team together, um, <clears throat> they build some new product or service, and then someone walks in and says, so how about you know, the materials we need for this, and how about the packaging, and how about the impact, and how about the recycling? And if all those questions come when the concept's actually already developed, they just come too late. Yes. Those questions should come from the very, very start. Um, and this was just what we were talking about, but this did fit well with Amy's talk. I mean, some do this because they're convinced. Some, many actually are still into sustainability. Not because they're convinced, but because they start to feel the pressure from the market or from government or from whatever. In this uh, <clears throat> room, we, um, uh, we pretty much uh, seem to be convinced. And, from what I heard this morning, I heard a lot of things which I thought were really nice because 
we do seem to understand the complexity of the challenge. And we do seem to understand that a holistic view is required. And I've heard no silver bullet talk this morning. No one like, you know, there's a simple and, and, <clears throat> uh, and, and straightforward way to solve the issue. I mean, a lot of understanding that we need lateral thinking, a lot of understanding that we need a holistic view. Um, <clears throat> and because I'm supposed to talk about community, um, <clears throat> a lot of initiatives also that um, somehow call on or create um, uh, networks. Um, and I think those networks are interesting. And I didn't put them all up, but these were a few this morning, so I've been Googling a bit while um, <clears throat> you were talking. Uh, I mean, the Santa Fe Institute, to a certain degree, that, that's a network in a community. I mean, the Center for Understanding Change, which I thought was really very interesting in a completely different area, uh, but, but still very much linked to, to technology and, and, and technological capability. I mean, obviously, the Compression Institute, uh, the Sustainability Consortium. And <clears throat> I, I thought it was something interesting with those networks because they're quite different from mine. Um, <clears throat> now, I'm not exactly in the same business as you all. Um, so I was thinking that <clears throat> maybe something was interesting or missing in those networks or would complement that. Uh, theory U was mentioned by you just, uh, I think, 20 minutes ago. Um, we're talking about driving very important, very big, very lasting change here. We're actually, <clears throat> when we talk about sustainability, I think we're talking about the economy, whatever. I would say 2.0, but um, some people say 4.0, it doesn't matter. But the next level of economy, capitalism. Um, and and that, that requires very deep transformation, change. Um, and, and there are networks out there. There are communities out there. And that's their aim. I mean, that's what they're at. I mean, Thierry Yu grew out of MIT, uh, Otto Scharmer um, and his team. Uh, and, and it is all about the types of changes that we are talking about the whole day here in this room. Yes. How will we get them through? And I was thinking of you, yes. Um, <clears throat> you're doing an extraordinary prototype, I'm sorry to say so, yeah, but it's a prototype because you're doing that with a few hundred maybe people in, how large is your company? 3,000 people and we're doing it with uh, 35. Yeah, so you're involving 1% of your company in, in a tremendous, beautiful, I mean, effort that I applaud, yes but how you're going to scale that up to 3,000 people. Now, your answer was, we're not going to make this the standard. That's not what I'm saying, yes. You're also not going to let it where it is, yes. You have to find a way that this is going to be embodied, that belief will grow, that the leadership that you're developing will actually flow through your company, that this will, you said yourself, that this will impact your values, that this will develop the leadership of tomorrow, that this will actually develop the company of tomorrow. Um, <clears throat> and, and so I thought there was another interesting network, um, and there's a lot of practitioners, especially in North America, actually, on, on Theory U, and then one where I'm very active in is the art of hosting, which, which are both, I'm not going to expand on that, but which are both really about how do we get change done? Not how do we get change designed, but how do we get change implemented in organizations, in societies, and so forth. And <clears throat> uh, I mean, I'm in some of these, and you're in some of these, and we're all in other networks and groups and communities, and many of us, and many of them, actually not just one, and we all come together every year here. And I know that this question was up here last year. And maybe it was up here the year before, but I wasn't there. Um, <clears throat> but, um, but we all come here together. So I think that um, <clears throat> because we are all part of one part of the equation, we're not only part of these communities, but we're also representing uh, industry or we're a particular company or we're representing maybe someone here, government. I have no idea, actually, but maybe. Uh, or, or we're representing customers. Uh, and some of us are innovation consultants. I'm one here, and Terry just walked out, but she's also, and there's a few more. Um, <clears throat> and so the question then is, doesn't work anymore, yeah? 
Um, <clears throat> this community, our community, the, the community of these people um, that think this is sufficiently important that we'd spend more than half a day on this um, uh, warming up to COFAs, uh, how do we leverage the power of that community? And I don't have the answer, um, but I'm open to input. Um, and, um, and even if the answer doesn't come now, that's okay. I think uh, we're here for three days, so maybe we have three days for the answer to mature. Thank you, Chris. Well, I didn't do anything, right? I only asked a question. Yeah, but that's the fundamental question, and we have some time. Any thoughts on that? I think, I think we saw that earlier today, right, with, C, with, the, with the C4UC presentation. I mean, I kind of felt like I was watching somebody walk through the buffet and uh, picking off and making their salad. I think that's a great observation, and that flew directly out of what we were talking about last year. Other thoughts? Is everybody worn out? Still on that, because I think that's true. Um, I, it was a, good, a great example of something that grew out of COFAs, but it is, it is one more, and it's not something that's kind of linking us all or embodying us all or creating the leverage that we could have from all our different practices, or is it? I don't know. What's your opinion on that? I need, I need to think about that some. Okay. Well, I know for myself, I have not come here looking to create some kind of initiative coming out of this that causes us all to have to work on something because I've got plenty of work already. I know for myself coming here, it's been to meet other people like all of you here and to have these conversations because I'm so inspired learning to think more critically. We are having a roundtable discussion on Saturday. We'll be talking about black swan events and what role the cloud plays potentially in sustainability and building community. I would ask you to come to that. And I am very interested in your thoughts about what this should become, what it should be next year, so I would like you to think about that. And or any other thing that we've spoken about today, like framing the issues and being objective and scientific consensus and C4UC and Doc, it looks like you've got something on your mind. Uh, two things. <clears throat> One is uh, when you're talking about climate change, I rarely use the term because that big fractal thing up there it looked like something dropped from a tall cow this morning. Uh, really represents such a mess of issues that nobody can, can comprehend them. But instead, the environmentalists got themselves into a trap, I think, talking about climate change, and that's kind of like a single-track thing. And there are a thousand things that can get us besides that. And that's the real argument. Second one is talking about a community, and this is a community of learning exchange. We may be able to improve that. But beyond that, if you're going to make your money on quality, using a lot less, look at any community or a built environment and how the people there and the people that serve them work together to make that happen. And then you really innovate, but people have to work together to innovate because one person's solution may interfere with somebody else, you know, the usual routine. That's it. <laughs>